G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're once again in the Northern Territory and we're going to go for a walk to a local billabong. We're going to set up camp, procure some water and we're going to practice some bushcraft skills and look at a few of the plants that typify the Northern Territory. So come along and I hope you enjoy the episode. I've been walking for about half an hour and I've got to an area that looks like it might be nice to set up camp. I've come through quite a bit of um, scrub, very uh, sort of dry, uh, scrubby savanna country, which has given way to an open billabong. I could tell that it was, there's going to be some water down here because the ground was just starting to slope downward gradually. There was an increase in pandanus and after that we had quite a few paper barks. Paper barks are like fresh water, so all those things leading uh, together sort of add up to the fact that there may be some water here. So, and looking through the trees, I can see some water. And we're gonna go down there and have a look. But I'm gonna call this home for now. I may change my mind, but I'm gonna drop my pack and we're gonna go down to the water's edge and see what else is around. It's bloody hot. So I'm going to have to replace some water. Before I do, I'm just going to have a, a good drink. Mm, really hits the spot. If you're hot and you're really, if you're, if you're low on water, but you still want to cool yourself down, you should never waste water to tip over yourself when it needs to be in your stomach. That's most important. But if you've got a bit of water to spare, <clears throat> one way of cooling yourself down without uh, wasting a lot of water and using minimal water is to take a mouthful of water and just use that one mouthful to cool yourself down. That really does feel good. What I've done, just only using a, a mouthful of water, I've tipped that over the back of my head, ensuring that it wets me, so I'm not tipping it out and wasting it on the ground, which is what a lot of people do. And immediately with that light breeze, I'm get a, getting evaporative cooling, which is wonderful. It really, really makes a difference. The other thing is, is even though we have to, we wear a hat to stop the sunshine, and I've been in forests all day, and this would not be sufficient in open country I'd have a big broader Krubra but in the country I'm it's quite close so this this has been fine but as we know we lose say 60 to 70 percent of our body heat through our head and neck um, conversely it also traps that heat in so once we're, we're out um, when we don't need to protect ourselves against the sun as soon as we're in a shady area we need to take the, the, our hat off so that we can release some of that heat exactly the opposite to what you do in a cold environment where if, you, if you're cold you'd stick on a head covering and then some socks so we need to take the cap off so that we can e immediately start um, feeling cool once we're in a shady area and coupled with wetting our head like I've just shown you it really um, aids in cooling you down a lot faster but we're getting on water we're going to go down and, and check out this billabong here and we're actually going to source some water hopefully and um, bring it back and sort of get a fire going so we can put it onto the boil because what I need to think about water being one of our big priorities in this environment we need to think about water so we can get through, um, get through the next day. Well I've just got my small day pack out of my main pack so once I get to camp I drop my main pack and I get my small day pack 24 hour pack which has got everything I need should I have to spend an unexpected night out um, in the bush so it's got all my essentials in there which come with me everywhere and that's my basis which goes in first into my main pack so I just simply have to take that out and it's got everything I need. To that I've just got my stainless steel water bottle, I've got a brown bag, most importantly I've got my snake bite kit. I've actually seen a couple of snakes around here, uh, killbacks mainly which are actually uh, 
they're um, non-venomous, but they still give you a bit of a bite, but you should always take a uh, snake bite kit when you're traveling in this country because there are browns and there are taipans in this area as well. So that's a must, it comes with me at all times. So we're just gonna go now and head down to the water and collect some water. So from where I've dropped my pack, I've walked about 60, 70 metres towards this beautiful billabong. But just before I've got to the water's edge, I've had a really, really good scout. I've walked up and down the water line just to make sure that there's no snapping handbags or, or saltwater crocs in the area. Pretty sure there'll be definitely uh, uh, freshies or freshwater crocodiles which aren't dangerous to man. Um, they're quite timid actually. However, like a dog, you tread on a dog's tail, it might bite you, it might yelp, go away. That's pretty much a, a freshwater crocodile, but um, they don't grow very big. However, saltwater crocodiles are the ones we're worried about. Um, here, any water source in the Northern Ter you, Territory, you must consider that there could be crocodiles in there. I don't know um, whether there are or not, but I'm not about to swim across there to find out. So I'm gonna assume, yes, there are. And if those, there's certainly some big, some small ones. So we're gonna establish some protocols um, in collecting our water so that we can be safe, be safe. And one of those is, is firstly to scout the area, look very clearly, I'm looking for any sort of sides, any croc, croc slides, which are the sliding marks crocodiles leave on the way into the water. However, because there's so much leaf foliage here, because the water would have been up here, I can see the tide, um, the uh, high water marks, so in the wet season, how high the water was. So as that's receded, usually the salt water crocs will disappear from that in this area. I'm pretty sure there aren't, but we just don't, you just don't know. Um, so I've looked around for any signs of croc activity, and but that's not a gimme. We're going to take the precautions in an unknown area as far as getting water out of a billabong. It's nice and shallow where we are here. Because it's nice and shallow, that means I can actually see the bottom when I get close enough, which means any big crocodiles would have to really expose themselves to getting close. Um, and I'll come down with a torch tonight and see if we can get, establish some eye shine and that's it's pretty hard it's unmistakable to see that but if I've chosen a very shallow area so that there's no deep approaches so that the only way um, that, that I can see anything coming as I said because it's quite shallow a big crocodile would have to be out out of the water and you'd see that so that's why I've chosen the area I have to get our water out of the creek so it's just going to be down just behind me here I'm going to collect some water in our um, Millbank bag. I'm going to saturate it, put it in the uh, in the water, and um, fill it up, and um, get some water going straight into my bottle, which I'll put on the fire, and we go and make our fire. But I'm also going to collect a, um, a significant amount of water in my dry bag, and that means I can take that dirty water back to camp, and it saves me having to come back and refill the brown bag all the time. I'll just set the brown bag up in camp and tip the dirty water from my dry bag into that then boil it, then I've got a water system already set up. So then I can just do things around camp, set up camp, get the fire going, etc. Okay. As I said before, I've had a good scout around here. This water's quite shallow. It's only about this deep here, and it gets deeper out there, but um, uh, it's a nice shallow approach. I'm not gonna hang around here long. I'm just gonna get the water I need. I've got my brown bag. I'm gonna saturate that, get some water, and then, as I said, I'm gonna collect some water in my dry bag as well, uh, and take that back to camp. So, 
very quick, I, I know I'd make sure when I, as I'm collecting water over the next um, couple of days, I'm just going to be change my position. I don't want to be going down to the same position and um, place again because if there was a croc in here, he sees a pattern. And once there's a pattern established, he'll go there. He might get a little bit closer every day, a little bit closer, a little bit, of close, a bit closer after that until bang. So you don't want to establish a pattern or go to places that other people or other animals established a pattern. So I'm going to get my water and clear out of here. I've had to set up a bit of a uh, platform here so I don't sink down into the water. So I'm going to fill up my uh, dry bag first with dirty water. Dry bags are great. Multiple uses, flotation devices, pillows, uh, and of course keeping things dry and collecting water. This is a uh, five litre uh, overboard bag. Very good bag, nice and strong. Now from a brown bag, just like the Millbank bags, you need to saturate these first, completely saturate them. Always keeping watch. Don't have to worry about this sort of thing in New South Wales, that's for sure. But up here is a different story. Got some water lilies here, great food source. We'll have a look at some of those later. really have to massage these brown bags because the flow rate is quite slow compared to the mill banks. If you're in a hurry, I prefer the mill banks actually because they're a bit quicker. But if you've got the time overnight, the, um, the brown bags filter a lot better because they're a lot slower and the weaves a lot tighter. But if you're in a hurry, they can take too long sometimes. So you have to wash them. I've put this through the washing machine a few different few times. It's, um, it's still takes a bit of time though. There's all sorts of leaves and crud in here. But we're going to boil this water and that's going to get rid of 99% of waterborne pathogens in everything except chemicals. But we're out in the bush here, there's not going to be any chemicals in here. So that will be fine. I let that run down past that white line. That just ensures that anything off the outside is not going into my water bottle, which I've got set up over there ahead of time. So I'm going to take that straight over there and stick that up, um, stick that up on, on the branch I've got and let that drip into my water bottle. Um, so I've got some filtered water and I've got my uh, dry bag full of dirty water, which I can take back to camp. So I established this place first. I put my bottle down, got the height of this worked out, and filled up my Millbank bag. Now I can come, it was already the, the water's dropped below that white line. Now I can let that um, fill up this bottle. And um, if you need to have all that prepared, I've got the water in my overboard dry bag, which I can take back to camp, and I can rig this up back at camp then and just keep adding the water to it so I don't have to keep on coming back here to get water. That's going to be enough water in the 10 litre bag to easily last me the night. Then I don't have to come down here at night. So I've minimised the number of times I need to come down to the water at all. See what, those mozzies are going to be absolutely hellish tonight. I'm going to have to put some, some long pants and a long shirt on. So I'll give that time to fill up. So now we've got our water. We've got our bag of dirty water we have our water that's filtered from the brown bag into our um, metal pot which is ready to boil straight away but to go back to camp get our fire going get our shelter up and we might have a look around the area and see what tucker we can find here's another piece of kit that i often bring out when i go into a remote area it's the grail geopress water filter now it's an all-in-one 
water filter. Now I'm not usually a fan of all in one things because once they go wrong, you've got nothing else. You always need backups for backups. But this is a particularly good one. It um, allows you to, it filters the water, it gets rid of uh, uh, protoz protozoa and parasites, bacteria, viruses, and it also gets rid of chemicals because it's got activated charcoal in it. Now I pre generally prefer um, to have a knowledge of you know what chlorine gets rid of, what uh, iodine gets rid of, chlorine dioxide and boiling. You need to understand all the, all the five water um, contaminants and how you get rid of them individually because you don't want to put all your faith in one device. But if you do have one device, this is absolutely brilliant. It um, consists, it's like a coffee press. And it's a cup, which you fill up with the dirty water, and there's your filter. And it's literally just a plunger that you press down, and once it's pushed through, it's drinkable straight off the bat. It gets rid of everything, including chemicals, because it has activated charcoal in it. So it's really great piece of kit. And then once you've got it, you can just, you've got a cup, you can put the lid back on and you've got a water bottle all in one rather than having a separate piece of kit to use with your water bottle. This is your water bottle. So in that respect, I really, really like it. So one piece of kit that does all of that. So let's have a look at how it works. I select a piece of water that's relatively clear. If it is really, really turbid, I'm going to filter it through my Millbank bag first because you need to do that because Otherwise, you're going to clog this filter up faster than you need to. So just skimming off water off the top. I make sure that I don't fill above the line. There's a line on here. Then what I do, this is going to be interesting here with the firm base. I'm going to press down. taken the lid off, it's actually a bit hard to balance here, I've taken the lid off and I'm pressing down with the heels of my hand, heels of my palms. And I've scoped this area, <laughs> it's quite shallow here, no approach runs and there's a lot of obstacles I would hear and see anything coming if something was approaching me here. It's, it's, it's quite very shallow out there. The other side's a different story. So I'm just pressing down on that. Putting my body weight on it. As long as it takes and that's good to drink straight like that and that tastes great really really good you've got a lid so now I can put that in my pack and I've got a water bottle and a lid there really great piece of kit they make them in smaller um, sizes as well and, but yeah, it's a really, yeah, it's something I'll always take with me in conjunction with my regular boiling system, Millbank bags and other things like that. So it's, as I said, it's a backup. So it's Grail's uh, GeoPress.
Well, I've got the shelter set up and a mozzie net. Got the fire going, we're boiling some water. The sun drops pretty fast up here. When it goes down, it goes down really quick and gets dark very, very fast. So you've got to work quickly. But um, as you saw, I've got my tarp up. Now, we're in the dry season, so it's dry season, so it's not going to rain at all. However, we do get pretty heavy dews, so that's pretty much just to prevent dews, nothing else. And I've set it up very, very high, and the reason for that is I want the airflow, because it's still hot. Still, it's about 36 degrees during the day, very high humidity, and we're, we're coming out of the, um, the cool season, going to start build up season, start getting hot and very humid. So I need that airflow. But an absolute essential is a mosquito net. This is a box style, um, army style mosquito net. It's not actually my military one, it's a, another one I'm trying out. And this is absolutely essential up in uh, the Northern Territory. Literally, the mosquitoes here will carry you away. So you, it's very, very important that you um, have one of these. And it, it, this keeps the airflow. I'm not a fan of really um, squashed in swags and that type of thing. That's not suitable for um, hiking anyway. That's a vehicle based option, swags. But um, even tents and tents pretty much prevent you from uh, getting out into the environment as well. So a very lightweight option is actually having a box style mosquito net. It's very versatile. Um, I do have a hammock, however, I find them too hot in a hammock because of those enclosed sides. I feel too hot and sweaty. So this, to me, is the most comfortable and it's, um, it lets that air flow. So what we have in here, I've got um, my bed mat. It's just a three-quarter sleeping mat, and that's what I use in the army when I'm out on patrol with North Force. It's literally just a small foam mat that folds up to that big, and that fits in my pack. And it's really, it's, it's, it's the ground, it's not too cold, so I don't have to worry about heat loss through conduction at the moment, but it's, um, it's more comfort than anything. However, you still need to watch that. The nights can get cool in here in the middle of the dry season, so you do need some insulation. Um, my sleeping bag is a, um, it's actually a British Army jungle bag. So it's very lightweight and it just, just keeps me enough because sometimes it does get pretty cool. If the temperature does drop a bit, and as I said, just because we're up north and, and it's slightly inland, the temperature can drop considerably. I've got my um, sea, to summit, sea to Summit reactor uh, lightweight uh, sleeping bag liner which adds another five to eight degrees which comes with me everywhere no matter where I'm in the world this is always it adds a little bit of extra warmth to a sleeping bag to a lightweight bag to, or just on its own it's actually a wonderful piece of kit so I always keep it there if I don't use it I just use it for extra cushioning from a pillow so that's uh, that's all I use that's that's all that's needed up here and I'll just put my clothes inside the sleeping bag cover and that'll be my pillow now, I know everyone's wondering, what do you do about snakes? Yes, there are a few snakes around. I've seen three or four today, and there's, um, I've seen two tonight. To be honest, they leave you alone. I just make sure that the sleeping bag, oh, sorry, that the mosquito net is underneath my sleeping bag, and it's all tucked in, so nothing can get in there. And I do that all the way around, and, uh, and I, I'll put, um, I'll probably get, my pack and I'll put the pack inside and I just literally go around so that every this that's why I leave an overhang with my um, mosquito net of about this much so I can fold it underneath and put things on top so there's no way something could get in um, it's not really the biggest thing that's around here as we'll see is cane toads they're out everywhere cane toads um, which are introduced from South America we'll have a look at those later and the little dart frogs so um other than that, it's just the mosquitoes. That's all I'm worried about. I don't really, not worried about snakes or the other things. It's really just the mosquitoes. They're the nasties. They will literally make the night simply hellish if you don't keep them out. So that's my sleeping arrangements for tonight. I'm um, going to be quite comfy. I've got the fire going. I've got the water that we got out of the billabong. Um, it's boiling and I'm going to re, uh, uh, refill that up and get, get a system going so we've constantly got water going that we can cool and we can have a cool drink later or have a cup of tea later as well. This is a water python. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely bright yellow bottom.
boiled water has been taken off the boil to, to cool. I've got my dirty water inside my dry bag which goes into the mill bank bag and I've got my Scout Clean Canteen 20 ounce which is now going to collect that water. I'll let the uh, 40 ounce Clean Canteen cool and then I'm going to add that. And then once the clean, the 40 ounces are cooled sufficiently, I'm going to stick it, stick it in my dromedary uh, six litre bag, which can then hang up. And then I'm going to have just a continuous water supply. So that'll cool, go in there, and I'll keep on uh, cycling around that, uh, around that uh, system. And it works really, really well. So um, it's got plenty of water here to do me for the night. And I'll even have a, a good couple of bottles of water for cool drinking water tomorrow morning. I'm going to... Uh, Make preparations for dinner now and uh, see you in a bit.